All right, here's the moment of truth. So now we've got a little bit of understanding on what the index and match function are and why we're talking about them because they're going to overcome limitations that other lookup functions have, such as the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Now we're going to bring them together to overcome these limitations and get a similar result to what the VLOOKUP does for us. All right, so now I'm inside the F column. We're still going to use these IDs here, but this time, uh, let's see, we're going to return the department for these specific employees. Remember doing that inside of the VLOOKUP? We had the VLOOKUP worksheet where we said, hey, go look for these IDs and give me the departments back. All right. Well, just to mix things up, okay, you don't have to do this, but if you'd like to, you can try it. I'm going to hop over here. I'm going to grab column A. This is on the index and match master employee list. I'm going to grab column A there. I'm going to cut it out, control X. Remember the limitation of the VLOOKUP said employee ID had to be the first column. Well, you know what? I'm now going to click on column E and I'm going to press control shift plus sign. You can also just right click and say insert cut cells. And if your shortcut doesn't work, I like control shift equals, but right click cut cells works as well. Now employee ID is one, two, three, fourth column in. So it's no longer the first one, which is what the VLOOKUP would recommend and say, you need to do this. Well, it's not there anymore, but let's go back to index match. We're going to do it anyways. We're going to see how this works. All right. So we're going to return the department based on these IDs. All right. So I'm going to hop in here. This is going to take the two of them and bring them together. I'm going to say equals index. I'm going to start with the index function. Now, why am I going to start with the index function? Remember the index function returns a value at a specific position. Just keep that in mind, put that in your mind, returns a value at a specific position. Well, remember the arguments that the index has, let's open up FX here. I want the first one again. It wants to know the array that you're going to search and then which row number, potentially column number, do you want back? Well, I don't know what the row number is that I want back, but I do know the array. I want the uh, department column array, right? The range of cells that contain the department. So I'm gonna go to the array. I'm gonna go to index match. And here I'm gonna grab the department column, which is this guy right here. I'm just gonna click on C1, control shift down arrow. Let's get that entire column from C1 to C38. And let's lock that down. F4, put the dollar signs in. So that's the array that I want. I want to get back the departments for these employee IDs. Well, here, here's the problem. Row number. Well, I don't know what row. I know the number, right? 1054, 1078, and so on. The VLOOKUP could do that for us. It could go search for that for us. But remember that limitation, the employee ID is not the first column anymore. Well, how am I going to find the row number then? Well, remember what the match function does? It returns a numeric value position based on a value. So I'm going to bring in the match here. I'm going to nest the match inside the row. So I'm going to type in match, M-A-T-C-H, open up a parentheses. And on the Windows system, I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to click on match. That'll change my arguments to match. If you're working on a Mac and you're inside of Excel, you can do this as well. I can click inside of a function, change it down here. But on the Mac, there's one extra step. So I'll go click on the match. Windows, it automatically changes it. On the Mac, you'll click on the match and then you'll click on the FX button and then it will change it. Okay, one extra step. All right, now I'm inside the match arguments. So the first thing it wants to know is the lookup value. Well, here I'm going to go grab the B4 cell. That's what we want to look for in order to find the appropriate department. The next thing it wants to know is, well, where am I going to find it? So I go back to the index match. I'm going to grab the employee ID column, D1 to D38. I'm going to lock that down, F4. And the last thing it wants to know, 
I'm going to drop in the zero for the exact match. So now we're nesting these two functions together. I'll click back on the index function. Everything's looking good here. I don't need the column num because my array only has one column of data anyways. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to hit OK. And I've got back my AT. So for employee ID 1054, let's just make sure. 1054 is in the AT department. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drag it down. Let's populate the rest. Let's just confirm one of them. Let's see. 1299, employee number 1299. Employee number 1299 is in the MF department. Oh, what happened? Nope, there's, I'm looking at the wrong one. If There it is right there. MF1299, we got it correct. So this is overcoming the limitation of the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. VLOOKUP has to look vertically through the first column. HLOOKUP has to look horizontally through the first row. If those were messed up inside your list somewhere, index and match can overcome those limitations. Plus, it's faster. It's not as resource intensive. Try it out. Try looking for the department based on the IDs. Look for the pay rate, the hire date, what, whatever you want to look for. Okay, And if you like to, just to throw a little monkey in the wrench, uh, you can move the employee ID column. Now, there's a bit moving inside of here. It's a bit more complex than the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So if you like, remember, rewind the video, replay it, try it a couple times. Get some practice in there.